Welcome to the channel everyone. This video I'm going to talk about steering, suspension, front end alignments, and diagnosing problems with the suspension. Now I think it's important for all body technicians to know the basics of how front end alignments work, what the angles do, and also how to diagnose problems with bent suspension. It saves a whole lot of time. You get a car hitting a wheel and if you don't diagnose everything correctly, you think you've got it done, the frame is straight, you replace suspension parts or your mechanic replaced them. It goes for front end alignment and it doesn't take an alignment and then you're back to square one trying to figure out what's going on with it. So it, it costs you time, it costs you money. So it's important to learn all these basics so you've got these skills to, to diagnose the problem the first time when it's in the shop so the car can get moved out in, in process and down the road. Um, I'm going to show some the three basic angles we're going to deal with on a front end alignment. I'm going to explain what these angles do, how they affect tire wear, and then we're going to move on and show you a vehicle and I'll show you what to look for on the suspension on the front end of a car for damage. So right off the beginning here, we're going to start just a generic front end of a unibody car. First angle I'm going to talk about is camber. And that's the amount of degree that the tires are either tipped out at the top or tipped in. Generally, everything is set in the factory with a positive camber, which is tipped out. And this line here is true vertical. That's 90 degrees from the road. This line here intersects the tire, follows the center line of the tire. That angle is the camber. And usually on most cars, that's right around a half degree positive. Positive is outside of the center line. Uh, if car's in a collision and his wheel gets bent in, the center line of the tire can get moved in. So in of this true vertical, that would be negative camber. So from there, we're going to talk about caster. Caster is the angle. Say this is your strut here, and it's it's not running at a true at a perfect 90. Here's your true 90. Through, the, through your tire, the angle between the strut, which is actually the steering axis, that's what your steering pivots on, and true 90, that is caster. And all cars, trucks, they should be positive caster, meaning it sits behind the center line. Forward vehicle, the front of the vehicle is facing this way. Your Pivot your axis point for your steering is behind center line. That's positive caster. If this angle was up here in front of center, that would be a negative caster. Now the reason they go with use a positive caster, you're driving around the corner in your car, you let go of the steering wheel, it centers itself. That's positive caster. It always wants to track down the road straight. It centers the wheel. It handles a lot better. When you start getting to a lower caster number or even negative, the car will wander around, wander down the road. So that's what caster does. Toe-in is the amount of, uh, between the front tires, they'll either be pointed in a little bit or pointed out. Usually they don't run right dead center on the alignment machine. They'll set them in. Usually a common spec is about an eighth of a degree in. Now too much toe-in will cause tire wear because they're scrubbing. If it's towed out too much, same thing, they're going to scrub. They're not running close enough to center. Uh, camber will give you tire wear. Excessive camber, will the tire contacts the outside edge of the tire. If it's negative camber, it's going to most of the pressure to contact areas on the inner edge of the tire. So these two things will affect tire wear. Caster really not so much, that's more of a drivability issue. And uh, like I said, it's, I think it's important for body technicians to at least know the basics, know how these work, what these angles do, and how to diagnose problems. Because you don't want, uh, you know, I've seen guys say, worked with guys, and they'll work on a vehicle that's on a frame rack, and they kind of know that something's not right with the front end, but they figure, I'll send it to the alignment shop and they can adjust it. Well, that's just putting your job off on somebody else. It goes to the alignment shop. If it doesn't fit in specs, if it won't align, they kick it right back to you and you're starting all over again. So the idea is get this fixed the right, right the first time and you move on. If, you know, if it comes back and you're 
on the vehicle again you're wasting time which means you're wasting money so hopefully these tips I'm going to show you will help you along with this process uh, I've got a vehicle here I'm going to show you kind of step by step what to look for how to diagnose stuff look for bent components and do a little bit of measuring so stick around and we'll get going with that okay I'm going to show you a quick way to diagnose a bent strut open up the hood and on top of your strut here you'll have this nut that tightens up onto that center shaft loosen that up about a turn and then put whatever you need a wrench socket or whatever on that top of that shaft and turn it and if that shaft is bent in that strut it'll show up in the tire you'll see the tire moving in and out and you can gauge it off the edge of the fender but just spin it around and it'll be obvious you'll see it moving if there's nothing going on there you know you got to look farther if you've got a you know if the tire is tipped in at the top but usually that's the first thing that'll bend uh, sometimes the, the knuckle will bend and we'll cover that here in a minute but uh, now another thing over the years I've diagnosed a lot of front-end damage or suspension damage customers would bring in cars at a shop and they said they took it to get a line and they, the alignment shop couldn't do anything with it said the frames bent and we asked them well were you in a collision no it wasn't in a collision well they got something else going on it hit something a parking curb a deep pothole or maybe some wear issues now if the alignment shop could diagnose that and take care of it in-house they would have made money doing the alignment selling the part and the labor to install the part instead they didn't know what the issue was and they sent it out and sent it down the road so for a shop you're better off if you, if you know these basics so you can keep everything in house make all the labor yourself to get this job done instead of relying on somebody else okay, to I'm going to show you a couple ways to measure and see if there's damage to the strut or this knuckle one is just use a little square a little combination square and a tape measure put this up on the rotor and you'll measure one side to the other compare measurement you can go either on the bolt here maybe right to the strut somewhere on a knuckle make sure you do both sides the same take a measurement if this is tipped in you're going to have a, a tighter gap right here say this side here is the damaged side and it's right on five inches if I go to the other side and measure it might show five and a quarter inches so you know there's an issue there um, another way it says angle gauge you can pick these up at usually hardware stores or magnetic base and you can put it on somewhere on the rotor here and compare side to side now these things they go in one degree increments but you can get a pretty good idea on it if you've got say uh, a negative uh, reading on here say it shows it's almost a degree negative the other side shows it's a little bit positive so you can get a good idea there and it's handy works real good I've got another one here and this was given to me by an insurance adjuster years ago and this is what they used to carry on them when they uh, look at cars for damage name is Pernometer these are made in Sweden it says on here and it's the same thing and they'd hold that on there on the rotor or actually you could even put it on if you find a flat spot on a wheel but that's a little bit trickier because if your wheel you got to find the outside edge to find a flat spot and if your wheel is turned in or turned out a little bit uh, the caster adjustment doesn't give you a true reading so you're better off going closer to the center but here you could put it on there and if you actually squeeze this together it'll lock it in so you can read it but you do the same thing you use this side to side and compare it now you want to start looking to see where the damage is let me show you see if we can get this in here if we take a I'm just going to take a wire brush here to this knuckle and this kind of simulates what you would look for you can see where this is a lighter color what happens when a knuckle gets bent or a strut or any steering component it'll pop the rust off and it'll you'll see it's changed color now 
That's one good thing about having rust on a car is just for diagnosing things. That's about the only good thing I can think of. But sometimes it'll even pop the rust off and you'll see a little bit of shiny metal underneath. And this is a good indication that it's bent. It's a good place to look right here in the knuckle. Uh, the struts sometimes will bend right up in this area. Also, they get hit, if you can see, this arm here on the knuckle where the tie rod mounts to and these will bend and you'll see the rust pop there too you can also check that just by putting your fingers in here and comparing side to side between the, the tie rod end and the stone plate if it gets hit on the back part of the wheel it'll bend this in so this gap is going to be tighter than the other side if it gets hit on the front of the wheel it's going to it's going to pull it this way and you'll have a wider gap into there. Another thing to check, you could have an issue with the steering rack. If it gets hit hard enough, it could jump tooth on the steering rack and your wheels may be straight, both of them fairly even and your steering wheel is turned way off center. That's usually a good indication that the steering rack has jumped a tooth. So, these are a couple things to look for, real easy to find. Now, one thing too, Usually when they get hit right on this wheel to bend a knuckle, the bearing is going to be bad because that force went through the bearing to, to actually bend this. Now you'll have a hard time getting the insurance company to pay for the bearing because they want to see physical damage and you can't see it. But I guarantee you a month down the road the customer is going to come back say I've got a weird howling noise in my front end and it's that wheel bearing. So just be aware of that. If you're replacing a knuckle, a strut, the bearing is going to be involved so you'll have to deal with that at a later date. So uh, we're going to move on to underneath and I'll show you what to look for. Okay, the next thing, real common, having a wheel driven back where this lower ball joint is back whole wheel will set back and you can usually gauge that also when the tire is on the car just go around and, and look at the gap between the fender the mud flap here and the tire you can put like say three fingers on the side that's not damaged you only get two fingers in this side so that's a good indication that you've got other issues going on now if you've watched my video and I know everybody's watched them all uh, on the unibody repairs I always talk about I never measure these cradle bolts because I don't care about this cradle I want to make sure the frame is in the correct spot so on the bottom of the frame there'll be a hole a dedicated hole or you use a bumper to rebar and you come back here and you can catch your control point sometimes you'll have a point up in here you can measure if you know that that frame is right on the money your strut tower is on the money it's in the suspension, it's in the cradle. Uh, you don't have to worry about second guessing or maybe the frame is still bent. You know 100% if there's an issue with suspension, it's in the suspension itself and not the frame. So these bolts here can get bent. If you take a good pop on this wheel, it could drive something back and I've seen where these bolts will bend back and what it does, it shifts the cradle back. So that's why I never measure on these because you're not getting a true measurement and you can check those just by putting your impact on or spin it out and see if it if it wobbles when it comes out or if it comes out straight and some of the cradles well not so much the cradles the frames would have and I don't know if they do it anymore they'd have a loose cage nut up in there with that with bolt and if you loosen all four of those points up you could shift that cradle around so it could be that it just shifted but most of them now are all dedicated they're welded in there solid you may have a little bit of play around this where you can shift the cradle not much but it'll move a little bit but same thing like i was saying about the lower control arm now this one is fairly cheesy it'd be probably fairly easy to bend but you can look up here at the mounts where the control arm mounts to and these could be bent in here the cradle could bend in here same thing you just look for the the popped rust in there but uh, now on a full frame like I said the lower control arms are pretty stout and I've seen them or most of them will bend the frame on this back perch and I've got a series coming up on full frame repair and I talk about looking for that and and how to fix that so 
these are just a few of the things you need to look at when you're diagnosing suspension problems or alignment problems. It's not just, uh, you know, it's not, usually it's not simple, just one, well, sometimes it's simple, just one part needs to be replaced, but the, the strut, the knuckle is about the uh, first thing, but you have to look at everything. Look at the cradle, you know, the same thing. Look for rust pop anywhere on this cradle around mount points but uh, so there's a lot of stuff to cover but once you learn the basics it's not too bad to, to figure them out another thing you could do you'll find a, a dedicated spot on a cradle a hole and you can come back here and measure to a hole in the frame and measure it side to side and if those measure the same, find a couple different spots, don't just rely on one. If they all measure the same, then you can pretty much be, uh, be sure that your cradle is fine and it's somewhere else, it's up in the suspension. But if you have a variance from side to side, then you have to start looking, did a bolt bend? Is the cradle shifted back? Is the cradle bent? And if you're not sure 100% on your frame, well, then you're kind of starting from square one again. So you have to you have to make sure that frame is square before you. Okay, to wrap this video up, I've got a diagram here, and this is kind of what you'd see on a front end alignment machine, what the technician would see on a screen. And let's just say he's adjusting camber on the front end. So what the green indicates, this center part right here, this is the preferred setting. When he's got his sensors on the wheels, you, he wants to shoot for somewhere right in this area and for, for camber. Now, what happens if you've got an issue with the front end suspension and it wasn't diagnosed right or maybe there's a frame issue? He may have this inspect. The camber may be out here. Maybe that's where it's showing. Instead of being at half degree positive camber, it's, it's out to maybe seven, eight tenths of degree, which is still in specs. So it's in the green, and if there's no adjustment, you think, well, you're still in the green, it's okay. But on the other side, the other side of the vehicle, you may be way out here on the opposite wheel. Well, they're both still in specs. They're still in the green, even though they're away from the preferred, what should be, you know, it should be right in this area. They're still in that range, but they're on the outer fringes you shouldn't have any more than a half degree difference from side to side for camber and caster. And it could be a little bit over limit. There may be uh, seven, eight tenths of a split, which is too much, but you're still looking at it saying, well, it's in spec, so maybe we'll let it go. But here's the issue, say down the road, if people either, the customer with the vehicle, it's got some wear on the suspension, maybe uh, another pothole or two down the road, they get another alignment and all of a sudden this mark here, it's in the red and there's nothing you can do with it. So at that point, they've got an issue with the car, the alignment shop may not know what to do with it and it should have been taken care of the first time. These things should be falling in pretty close to the preferred area of the alignment specs right off the beginning and you don't want to let it go right at the outer fringes say well it's in the green so we're just going to push it down the road they're probably going to have trouble with it later usually you don't see them after some wear and tear and miles on a car these specs don't get closer to center that's why even if you've never had any damage on your car and you get a new set of tires you have alignment done they usually do they usually find out while well, the toe ends off or a little bit of adjustment here and there it never gets closer to center, it's always going away. So you just want to keep these things as close to center as you can to preferred what they want. And you want to do this the first time. So anyway, I hope these tips helped you along. I hope you learned something from the diagnosing part of this video. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, send me a comment if you like. And remember, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done it. Thanks for watching.